Welcome to the Code with Jason meetup. Uh, we're here again with our mentee, Marvin. Marvin, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jason. Yeah, thanks for being here again, and welcome, everybody else. Um, so, Marvin, do you want to remind people the project that you've been working on? Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to get to a point where um, I'm able to build a Rails gem um, that allows me to install a CSS framework uh, with a little bit of scaffolding along with the framework. Um, and uh, basically, I'm starting from scratch, and we did one session last, I think, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I tried to build the gem uh, based on the ideas that we discussed the last time. And I I made some headway, but uh, still not quite sure uh, how Rails would... Uh, uh, or what best configuration or what best tools of Rails should be used to get to the gem. Like there are a couple of options, like you can use Prockets of uh, Assets Pipeline, or you can use Prop Shaft, or, or CSS Bundling Gem is also there. And there used to be Webpacker a couple of years ago, which was a hard thing. So I was not sure about which front end tooling to go with mm -hmm. and, and then how to structure uh, uh, my gem uh, in, in a way that it's easy to use for anybody who is going to install it. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay. And can you, um, okay, so your project is called Toucan. Do I have that right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and can you give us like a high level overview of Toucan just as a reminder for like what the use okay. case is and that kind of thing? Okay. So Toucan is a CSS framework. Uh, just like Bootstrap or Tailwind or any of those uh, design systems that we have uh, these days. The difference is that uh, Toucan doesn't follow the responsive web design. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't um, it's not the same thing as responsive web design. It's a more newer concept based on newer CSS standards that have come out lately. And, uh, and I'm calling it intrinsic web design. Uh, in which you take into account uh, things like uh, the orientation of the viewport and the physical size of the viewport and stuff like that, where you can, you know, induce intrinsic qualities of the medium into the interfaces that you would provide the user. Uh, so one way to uh, think of this is uh, by looking at the differences between uh, mobile apps experience or the UI of a mobile app uh, versus a mobile web page. So, you know, there are some intricate differences between the implementable interfaces of these two mediums. Uh, whereas I would consider the native experience of a mobile as, as one that you get on a mobile app. That's an intrinsic user experience. Okay. Whereas a mobile web page is more of a compromise layout of what we had on the desktop and how much we can have on a mobile. So those approaches are different. Uh, so Token is an implementation of that, uh, very, very early version of it. Uh, and uh, uh, should I um, show how responsive fits into that or? Yeah, why not? Okay, okay. Um, um, let me screen share. Am I screen sharing already? No. Nope, not yet. Okay. All right. So uh, this is the overall design space. I mean, I'm showing you a plot of it and uh, in which um, you scale the devices according to their physical size. Like if you see the X axis, uh, you start in a landscape mode of mobile which is where all the gaming related apps or uh, maps related, Google maps related type of apps where you need a more full screen immersive landscape experience. You mm -hmm. start from that and then go to the landscape of a tablet, then go to the landscape of a laptop, go to the landscape of a bigger Mac and you scale it by, uh, by increasing physical size. Okay? okay. Similarly, you go for an orientation portrait where you start from an Apple watch say, uh, which also has a great browser 
and then you go up to mobile, and then tap in, and so on. You can go up to the projector in television this way. So uh, responsive design is basically forcing your design thinking without considering orientation and stuff like that. And you try to use one style sheet for both desktop uh, and mobile and a little bit for tablets as well. Whereas intrinsic web design, uh, you would just separate those two style sheets completely. So there is no relationship between a desktop's layout and mobile's layout. Mm. And, and then you will serve those style sheets based on whatever view reports are matched according to orientation media queries and container queries and stuff like that. So, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. This is what I have right now. Okay. Can, yeah. And I'm trying to, um, what I think I want is like, I would like us to be able to figure out what we want to accomplish and hmm. then separately figure out how. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, I'll show you the source code of uh, um, Tukan. And uh, it, usually, what happens is that it's a compiled, either it's a compiled uh, style sheet, which in case of Tailwind, uh, DHS has uh, DHS has written a gem where you just include one line on inside the head of your Rails app and you get all the CSS uh, classes and the framework of Tailwind inside your Rails app. That's, mm -hmm. that's how it's easy it is. Uh, in our case, uh, uh, in our case, uh, it's not going to be a link tag. It'll be uh, it'll be a style tag and some critical CSS that's written inside that style tag. And the style tag goes into the head of your Rails app. Um, and in that style tag, we will have these rules. So if you uh, look at line number 13 and 14, what's happening here is that I'm importing a portrait style, portrait access style sheet if the orientation is portrait. And uh, uh, and if it's a landscape, then I import a landscape access uh, style sheet. This, okay. this style sheet connects to a router, mm -hmm. uh, which, which implements the access that I just showed uh, uh, considering physical size of the device. So in the router, I have portrait CSS, which starts from an Apple Watch uh, for uh, like sub-inch interfaces. And uh, and then it goes to mobile. And these are like various CSS4 and CSS3 media queries that uh, make sure that you are on a touch device and stuff okay. like that. Okay. These are so I want to get some additional clarity on something that I'm kind of murky on. Um, yeah. Let's say that I install the Toucan gem in my Rails app. Yes. Um, what needs to happen in order for things to work at the highest level? Is it that we need to have some CSS and JavaScript included? Uh, there is no JavaScript as of now uh, to be included, just pure CSS. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there are, there are two uh, levels of CSS. Like, we don't want the end user to, you know, edit the portrait or landscape router files. This mm -hmm. is something that the framework is going to provide, unless they know what they are doing and you know they want to really change it. Uh, so this is not scaffolded uh, for the end user. However, uh, the app folder, which is where the end user will be writing their style sheets, their their CSS, mm -hmm. this something that I want to scaffold. Accessibility folder is something that I want to scaffold uh, into the assets folder of Rails app. Mm. And this is where you write all the desktop related style. And if you want to support mobile, tablets, watch vehicles, even, you know, okay. you know, Tesla has a great browser, but there are certain other new accessibility constraints there. For example, 
you are you're tied down to the seat with a seat belt on so you have to stretch mm -hmm. and you know you need a bigger button so that you can okay. eat up into stuff like that so yeah so this is something we need to scaffold and yeah the some some okay. parts are okay well let's set some like high level objectives how about um do you have yeah. some kind of note taking program that you use uh i'll just touch a file on the i'll just touch the file on the repo and uh okay. use mark yeah use markdown to do it so okay. yeah okay so i had uh, no Oh, this font is small, right? I have to yeah, zoom be, in. It'd be yeah. good if it's a little bigger, I think. Yeah. Maybe like one or two notches bigger. Yeah. I think that's probably good. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, I want us to think at a very high level. Okay. So, what are your like let's let's talk about Apart from anything technical, what are your like aspirations for the project? Like, are you hoping to put it out there and other yeah. people use it, or is it just for your own use, or what? Uh, it's for my own use as well. Uh, so I want to use it in on a Rails project that I am building, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at the same time, I, I want to make it available for the rest of the world as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe let's make a note about that, like. I don't know exactly how to word it, but like one mm -hmm. of our, I don't know if I'd call it, I mean, it's up to you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do we want to call this an objective or an aspiration? Like, do we want to make it, do we want to commit to doing it? Like commit to, to doing all the things that are necessary to put it out online and get people to use it? Or do we want to ignore that part for the foreseeable future? and just consider it a nice to have uh no i think it'll be important to have okay it opens completely yeah i have it online yeah okay yeah. yeah then i would suggest we do a heading called like objectives or something like that sure and then we can put that um under that heading publish yeah public, public. online to railsgem.org well maybe that's that's kind of an implementation detail okay um how do we want to put it we want to like make it available to other rails developers right hmm. yeah publish online okay okay make to Yeah, um, it's it also has to say that it's easy to use, right, or something like that. No. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Okay, great. Easy to use or easy to implement intrinsic interfaces on Rails app? Should I say that or just leave it? It's oh, I think fun. easy to use is good enough. Okay. Okay. So there's different kinds of objectives. That's like, 
Hmm. Like if this were a commercial project, I'd call that a business objective. Okay. But maybe we can come back to that. So there's also like the functional objectives. Hmm. Um, okay. So, hmm. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Why don't, if, if you don't mind, Marvin, let's just call it like business objectives for the time being oh, yeah. until oh, we no. come up with something better. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I meant for like that, that first um, heading up there. Yeah, sure. Sorry, not that either. Like the the line one where it currently just says objectives. Oh, Maybe yeah. Make that say okay. business objectives. Okay, sure. Cool. Yeah, and then... Document this. Oh, okay. And specify licensing, which is MIT. So, um, yeah, this is like okay, okay, and then we can have maybe our functional objectives. Sure. At the very highest level, it's like when you hmm might take us a a little bit of figuring to to figure out how we want to word this but it's like when you install toucan mm. some certain things should happen like you should have toucan's css available to your project or something like that yeah okay uh and and it provides a an html clause that you just add to your head and it brings in uh that's what, that's how I'm thinking right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it brings in all the critical CSS into the app, and it connects to the router. Anyway, so uh, how do I write this? Okay, so um, upon installation, is that how uh, we are going to put this? Sure. Like add installation. Okay, add installation. Okay, I might actually suggest that we break these out into separate mm -hmm. individual objectives. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Like maybe the CSS could be one by itself. Yeah. Um, baseline CSS. Oh, what else? Okay. I would suggest that we be even more um, coarse grained with it. So like instead of baseline CSS, because like when I look at this and I see baseline CSS, I'm like baseline CSS, what does that mean? But we could okay. just say CSS, it adds some CSS. Okay, sure, sure. Um, okay, it's scaffold some directories to put user written styles into. Okay, that seems good. And okay, what provides, else needs to happen? Provides the uh, HTML clause that adds CSS. Again, this is too specific, but we we'll let it. Provides an HTML clause that adds critical CSS into the head. I don't know if we should 
ads ads to kan i can say ads to include it okay now to me this seems fairly specific i'm yeah. curious what the okay provides an html clause that adds to kin the head of the rails app um this is the method of installing toucan that you want to make available to the user uh this is a method to install any css framework into any rails app or any app not just rails so you just add a link tag right so instead of a link tag i can say a link tag over here but we are not using a link tag so we'll be using a style tag it's like html or style tag and some CSS inside that tag to insert token into the layout. Okay. So, okay. I want us to be careful to separate the what from the how. Yeah. Um, oh. And to me, this actually seems like a how. Like number yes. three provides an HTML clause, et cetera. That seems like how we accomplish number one. Hmm. So I think okay. we don't even need to worry about number three right now because all I want to be concerned with right now is what we want to do, not how we want to accomplish it. Okay. Yeah. I think that's how I've been stuck in this process. Ah, okay. Uh, moving into how and not considering enough how of what. Okay. Cool. So I'll just remove three. Yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe we can move on to a third heading. Yeah. Go ahead and finish that. Okay. Okay. Um, we can call it maybe like implementation milestones or something like that. Hmm. Yeah. So the other day, Marvin, we created our own gem. That's like right. Kind yeah. of our, our hello world gem. Yes. And to be honest, I forget where we ended up with that one. Do you remember? Um, like, did we get it all the way working? Yeah. So we use you used a rail tie to uh, insert hello world text into a rails app. Oh, right. This is where it was. This is the right. rails app. And uh, the message came in from a gem. Uh, that's a hello gem. Let me see. Yeah, this okay. One. Okay. Yeah. So I might suggest under our first, under our first item under um, implementation milestones, we can yeah. put create a hello world ruby gem oh, okay sure and obviously we already did that but yeah. we can give ourselves credit yeah yeah okay and marvin can you think of a tiny baby step from getting getting from what you know how to do now to getting to all the way done with with what you want to do, can you think of something that'll just inch you forward in that? So, uh, it's the first step that I have been stuck on. So, uh, again, question between what and how. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I was not sure whether we. Use we are supposed to use prop shaft or sprockets. That's one. Uh, and that confusion comes from the Rails side of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, but also on Dukin, uh, there is some CSS and then there is some SCSS, which is like a SAS uh, type of file, which needs to mm -hmm. get compiled into CSS mm -hmm. and, you know, do all sorts of uh, stuff on that. And then, um, like, I think the first step will be, uh, the baby step will be to have that token uh, sub-module inside the, inside the Rails gem itself. Uh, so a copy of, or a clone of that repo uh, goes into the gem, which is where it's going to get imported into, uh, which, which is what we're going to use to copy the files into a Rails app. Uh, so maybe have the first step will be to have that code, which has already been written and introduce that code into, into the rails gem that we are building now. Okay. I think that's a good milestone. I can think of something that's 
even smaller that I okay. might suggest first. Okay. We could do like a Hello World style gem, but with the addition of mm -hmm. that, it has one CSS rule in it. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, let me write it down. Um, allow the gem to import one CSS rule into the rails. Yeah, and I have a tiny discomfort with with the wording. Okay, um, sure. Okay, what we want is we want to have this gem that has some CSS in it, and we want the CSS from the gem to like affect our app. What do we want? We want I'm trying to think of the right wording. We okay. want to be able to use the, the CSS from the gem in our app. Okay. So we want to make, let's say there is a utility class, just one class, and we uh -huh. want to make we want to make it available inside the Rails app in the views. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason I'm okay, so import is the part that I'm uncomfortable with okay. because again, that is a how rather than a what. Mm -hmm. Um, so my suggestion would be, I, I'm, I'm not saying that this is like the final wording or anything, but like, we should create a gem whose CSS can be used by the project it's installed in. Hmm. Cool. Well, I don't even want to say install though. Yeah, yeah. Because who says that in installing is the way that the CSS is going to be used? Again, yeah. we want to separate the what from the how. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe you just humor me for a second and let's blow this one away. Okay. Let's blow away all the text for number two. Okay. And let's say create a gem whose CSS can be used in the Rails app. Yeah, in the Rails app where it's installed. And sorry, in the Rails app where the gem is installed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, by the way, just a small just a small comment about yeah. about writing online and written communication and stuff like that. Yeah. There's so many times when I see something written that says like just now we could have said create a gem whose CSS can be used in the Rails app where it is installed. But if we use words like it, then it's yeah. like hang on a second, what exactly does it refer to? Right. And so I like to replace words like it with the specific thing that it refers to. Yeah. There's so many times where like I'm in a chat or something like that and somebody types something to me and I read it and I just have to respond with, what do you mean? Um, yeah. So so being clear about these sorts of things, I think, uh, is really helpful. See, he'll say something in the chat. Sorry, Sahil, I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, same goes with this, like the word this. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like a yeah, lot like, of times they just say mm -hmm. this, 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 this. And I'm like, wait, what does this refer to? And exactly. Like, like sometimes not just written, but like when we are having a verbal communication, mm -hmm. tend to use a, this a lot in the meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. And I am always like, why can't you just name what is this mm. because then nobody needs to keep this mental maths of what exactly this is referring to at a certain point in the communication yes i'll tell that to javascript developers um okay 
yeah so yeah and actually marvin look at line eight at installation it adds yeah that's a, a case of ambiguity what is it mm. in that scenario maybe we can reword that to be more clear mm. create a gem whose CSS can be used in a rails project where the gem oh. No, sorry, I was referring to line eight where it says at installation it adds. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All the framework CSS, all the CSS. No, that part's fine. Okay, sure. I I'm talking about, about the part where it says at installation it okay. adds. What is it? It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Okay. CSS, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So implementation milestones, implement a hello world Ruby gem, which we already did create a gem whose CSS can be used in the rails app where the gem is installed. Okay. Let me think. All right. So that one, you know, it can be just like, it makes the body a different background color or something like that. It can be something totally trivial. Yeah. But Toucan is a bit more sophisticated than that. What are some of the properties of the CSS that needs to be used in what I'll call the client app, the, the app where the gem is installed? Um, You, you mentioned... SAS, like I'm thinking about other kinds of things like that. I think the first step, uh, we don't have to go to this level of SAS because the first installation is just plain CSS, like the first critical CSS that we have and the router that's like plain CSS. So we can probably use a background color property to see if things are coming uh, into the Rails app or not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe another milestone can be building a gem that scaffolds directories into the client app. Fine, okay. And a thought is occurring to me. Um, one way we could approach some of this stuff is to actually write some of the documentation first, hmm. even though none of it is built, none of it works, but we could write the documentation first and then bit by bit, we could make the documentation be true. Sure. Uh, yeah, that'll be great because we are basically writing the spec first and, uh, and then implementing it. Uh, exactly. So... Um, should I write that as a milestone? I think it's a process, right? Well, why don't we even open up a file right now? We can just call it okay. installation.md. Okay, sure. All right. Okay. So push your shoes, no, put put yourself in the shoes of somebody who is looking at the GitHub page for Toucan. Yeah. What would you what would you tell that person to do first? Mm, add token trails on your gem file. Oh, uh, I mean, this is the usual, almost all the gems say this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this this would be the first step and then bundle install. And bundle. Mm -hmm. uh, then second step. Uh, do you think this is fine? First step? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, second step is where we say that you add this HTML clause in your head tag. Uh, or if the scaffolding is the next step, then we say that you run this command. Uh, it could be a rate command or, or an installation command. I just don't know. Uh, uh, 
and that and that will scaffold the directories inside the assets folder uh, of the project. So yeah, I can imagine something similar to how you do like Rails G devise install that kind of thing. Yeah, you do like Rails yeah. G you can install. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we can do that. I think I'll just like that much for now. Mm -hmm. So it's an engine basically. Yeah, so maybe one of our implementation milestones could be that we we create a gem for which we can run Rails G two can install. Okay. And yeah. it scaffolds some directories or something like that. Oh no, no, sorry. I mean that wouldn't be part of your instructions to the user. Yeah, yeah. I get it, yeah. This is another implementation milestones. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I think it might actually make sense as part of number three, because it's like building yeah. a gem that scaffolds directories into yeah. the client app. It'll have to do that somehow. So we could maybe say, Build a mm. build a gem that scaffolds directories into the client app via Rails G yeah. install. Yeah, uh, Rails mm. G two can install. Also, I'll just put this. Uh huh. Uh, to the install. It's like uh, along the lines of this, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And this might be enough to start with, but before we go forward with that, can you think of anything else that should be in this document here? In the documentation, yeah. So after installation, um, once the directories are there in the project, uh, we can instruct the end user to go into those directories and start writing their CSS, uh, mm -hmm. the ones, ones which are uh, relevant for desktop interfaces or mobile or tablet and so on. Uh, okay. Um, how should I specify that? Oh, Good yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. So there's an app folder inside the CSS framework, which is where and the end user will be writing their CSS. So okay. maybe I'll, I can show the path to it and tell them to go and start using the framework over there. So, well, is that part of the installation or is that part of the usage? Uh, both. I mean, both. Yeah. It'll be like, um, so all the end user written styles will go in that folder app folder, which is where, uh, the SCSS files are. And then those SCSS files gets compiled into CSS. Um, so okay. yeah, it'll be usage also. Okay. Okay, yeah, however you want to word that. We can we can modify it later. Oh. Mm -hmm. This rough. Okay. okay. This much would be enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you take us back? Yeah, that one. Okay. Um now if you want to, Marvin, we could get started with with the next implement implementation milestone. So obviously yeah. we 
did number one. Number two, we could modify our existing gem, put some CSS into it, which oh. gets used in the client app. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go into that gem. Yeah. So we had a, so this is the Hello Rails gem that we had implemented last two in the last session. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are asking the view helpers to inject this text, a uh, Hello Rails gem into the into the Rails project. Uh, so instead of injecting this piece of text, we we can put in some style or some HTML. Yeah, we can put some style somewhere. I'm not sure if it'll be. Not on this file, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. And before we make any changes, how about let's check our Git working state? And oh see yeah. If we're in a clean state or not? Oh, this font size is too small, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it looks like we are not in a clean working state. So let's address that. Hmm. Oh. I don't know what the difference is. Oh, you can do git diff dash dash cached. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think this is fine. Okay. Is, there, is there more stuff? If you do like control D to scroll down, is there more stuff? Okay. Okay, there's that. Okay. Uh, let me just okay. comment this, right? Sounds good. okay 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 and then let's do a git status just to make sure the working state is clean okay yep. great okay and if it were me i would actually create a separate branch for the css stuff okay um i'm gonna call it css the branch sure You want to do okay, yeah. I forgot a good branch. Uh, um, you can do gco dash b css. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, great. All right, okay. Now let's figure out our first step. Maybe you already know what the first step is. I certainly don't. Uh, source folder, create a source folder for the CSS file to go into. Okay. And do you know by what mechanism the client app will receive the CSS? Uh, I think the source folder will have the CSS, the test CSS, and that test CSS will be ported over here. If somehow we pull the contents of that file into this method. Uh, I mean, we can rename the method hello rails gem app. Instead of that, we can say whatever CSS method. And then this method will expose uh, using the rail tie, uh, whatever CSS we want to put inside the rails 
project. Hmm. I'm skeptical okay. <laughs> that we want to couple the CSS to this Hello Rails gem message. Okay. That, okay. You know what I mean? Uh, why is that? Well, because because what does this hello rails gem message method have to do with our css it doesn't seem like the two should have to be connected yeah and then how do we expose uh like how do we take the uh CSS classes that we want to send to the project uh how do we take all of that into the new project no idea okay okay but we can ask ChatGPT. Okay, sure. <laughs> and I see it's nine fifty-two, so we do have to start wrapping up shortly. Oh. But we can at least we can get the question going with ChatGPT and see what it says. Um. Yeah. So, question. Yeah, we can kind of state our objective and. Ask hmm. ChatGPT how it might accomplish it. We want to add CSS to a. Yeah, yeah I mean, even number two below, like on line yeah. 16 there, create a gem whose CSS can be used in Rails app where the gem is installed. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good description. Yeah, it is. Set yeah. up your gem, structure your gem. Define your CSS and gems to increase. Let's say this. And then include the CSS in a gem manifest. Okay. Okay. So it's already in that engine style of implementation. Okay. Okay. And then it's going on how to use it. Okay, this is this is fine. I think we are here. Step. Okay. <sighs> Does it seem like something you can use to to modify yeah. your gem? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, that might be a good place to leave it then. And then yeah. Next time we do a session, we can we can pick up where you left off. Sure, sure. Awesome. Okay. This was nice. Yeah, great. Um, okay. Couple uh couple comments before we go. Um, one is dear YouTube viewer, um, if you want to participate in my mentorship program, you can go to codewithjason.com and I have a link there where you can apply to be a mentee. Um, and the other comment I'll make is that this kind of work is very similar to what I do for consulting. Um, I mainly help people like CTOs and VPs of engineering and such. Um, but I, one of the main things that I help with is planning projects. Um, the main thing that I communicate that I do is is TDD coaching, which is true. Um, but a lot of times, a big part of that is figuring out what we want to do in the first place, because you can't TDD a project until you know what you want to do. So like, Marvin, can you pull back up that, um, like those plans that we came up with? Yeah, so this is something I do a lot with my clients is like, we talk about a project together, and then just like, get really clear on what we want to do and write something like this together. And then we'll translate our plans into a plan for writing tests and stuff like that. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that. And if you're interested, dear viewer, in learning more about my consulting services, you can go to codewithjason.com 
there's a link there that says consulting. All right, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me today. And Marvin, you can grab another session using that link you have. And yeah. I'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye.